What's up, guys? How you doing? I'm Paul, and yes, you read that title correctly last night. I was minding my own business. Well, kind of minding my own business. I was actually just doing a little snooping. I was snooping because I overheard a very interesting conversation, and then the people turned to me, and they came after me. Okay, came after me. as They, they approached me. All right, I'm about to get into it. Cat statue, welcome. Uh, you look great back there. I actually like that angle of you, maybe even better than the side angle from last video. Oh, also, patron shout out. Thank you guys for supporting what we do here on this channel, making this possible. And actually, earlier this morning, I already was uh, sharing some patron encouragement, which we do each week. And I was diving a little bit into what happened last night with being approached by the Colts and some takeaways. So they got the inside scoop even before the general YouTube subscribers did. So become a patron. Patron only Zoom calls monthly, weekly Patreon encouragement, and other perks. Love to have you guys. And also guys, real quick, we started filming this new video that I'm very excited about that includes the mystery box, but then we were not able to finish filming, so we're gonna be finished filming it and getting it up for you guys very soon. Get ready for that, make sure you watch it. All right, here we go. Last night, I decide, Morgan, you hang out at the house, we have a little shopping list, let me go to one of my favorite places, Walmart. And I don't say that uh, jokingly, Walmart is one of my favorite places, partly because of what happened last night. And uh, <clears throat> I posted on my Instagram story, if you guys follow me on there, Paul Oligus, I, I like to post on there. Um, I get there and I walk in and I just feel, you know, the life of Walmart. <laughs> There's always interesting stuff going on at Walmart. Activity. Life. So I go back because I thought to myself, you know what? I'm feeling good tonight. Uh, I'm going to go check out the book section. Maybe I'll do a read it or pass where I take pictures of books and then let you guys vote if you would rather read it or pass. It's fun. It's something I do on Instagram. So I'm over there looking at the books and I see three men talking to one man um, engaged in conversation. And I'm just kind of like, ooh, uh, that that intrigues me. Is is evangelism going on so I just kind of mosey over a little closer and I pretty quickly get the feeling okay yes they're they're referring to the Bible they're referring to scripture but something seems a little off but I'm not totally sure and then I think I hear the phrase that um, kind of triggered my memories joggled my memories I think I hear the phrase heavenly mother and so I'm kind of like oh Ooh, I've heard that before. So I uh, continue to look at the books. They finish the conversation with uh, the person they were with and kind of turn to go. And I'm, I'm just like, you know what? Just whatever. Whatever. I'm looking at the books. My eyes are kind of glazed over because I'm more interested in hearing them. But my, I'm focused on the books. And suddenly I hear footsteps coming over. And then, excuse me, sir. Do you have a moment? I turn, it's the three men. So I'm here at one of my favorite places, Walmart, and I overhear three men. It sounded kind of like evangelism, talking to a guy, um, but something sounded a little different, a little strange. So I kind of hovered, because uh, I was in the book section, and then they came over to me. So here we go, here we go. It's on, baby, it's on. It is on, cat statue. I'm being approached by these peeps, part of a cult, and you'll hear, I don't say cult lightly and you'll hear me break this down um because to be completely honest i would prefer not to call different uh we'll call them religious sex a cult i would prefer not to if the where the disagreements that we have are minor gray area issues these people believe uh, you can't drink alcohol. These people believe the Sabbath is on blah, blah, blah. Like, just more gray areas. I'm okay. Okay, I, I see it one way. You see it another way. That's okay. Love you, you, brothers in Christ. But there is such a thing as a cult. The Bible warns that there are going to be truly false teachings to test the spirits. They're not all going to be jiving in the same lane. We're not. And so I need to be able to test those and I need to be able to call something a cult when it is a cult. So they come over, we start talking. It was mainly one guy talking and then two, what I would consider kind of yes men, just nodding their heads, listening, looking around. And then I would maybe say something and then they would occasionally pop in, but it was mainly one guy. They seem like 
pretty normal likable guys. So the main guy asks me some question, kind of small small talk ish, and then I pretty quickly say, "All right guys, so where does your all's teaching differentiate from traditional Christianity?" Because get this, 10 years prior to last night's encounter, I was in LA for 4 months and I was in one of the malls in Los Angeles and I was approached by someone who had talked about the God Mother or the Heavenly Mother, God the Mother. And so, again, my mind was triggered when I heard these people. And in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, that was 10 years ago, and that was a very interesting, kind of unsettling conversation, but I wonder if now, 10 years later, my understanding of Scripture has gotten stronger to the point where I can um, more confidently refute these people's arguments, call out false doctrine. That's, that's what I'm thinking. So that's why I was kind of intrigued and even almost hoping to engage with these people. And now here we are, we're having this engagement. So I ask them, you know, where, where do you guys, where are your biggest things that do not align with traditional Christianity? And at first, the main guy started talking about, well, the Sabbath day, different things regarding the Sabbath day. And I'm thinking, okay, you know, but, but I knew about the Heavenly Mother being a big thing with these guys. So I said, I kind of said again, like, okay, but what is like the big one? What is the biggest thing that is different from traditional Christianity? And then one of the other two guys kind of chuckled and he was like, heavenly mother. And so then the main guy was like, yes, we believe in a heavenly mother. Let's dive into scripture. They, he kept saying, let's look at the scriptures. Let's dive into scripture, which is so intriguing about all this because that's what I'm about too. Wearing a shirt, and some of you guys are going to say, Paul, your shirt is wrong. It says, in the world, but of the world. But no, read it closely. In the world, but of the word. Very appropriate shirt for today's video. But the main guy kept saying, like, let's look at scripture, and scripture will show how there's God the mother who we should be holding in reverence. And so I, I just asked, like, okay, pretty much I was like, okay, guys, show me the biblical hard proof for God the mother or the heavenly mother. And he started saying, like, well, it's it's written throughout scripture from beginning to end and he he pulled up a verse in genesis and he started saying see like so you to to create to give birth you need a mother and i'm sitting here kind of like mm. and then he he pushes it pulls all the way to revelation and says now let's look at revelation cuz it's it's written throughout scripture from beginning to end about god the mother and i said yeah but uh okay you know revelation hard to understand. I think we could all agree that it's a, a book that's hard to understand. I said, can you point me to where Jesus referenced God the mother, where he clearly referenced this heavenly mother that we should ultimately be worshiping? And the guy's response to, to my question there, I thought was very interesting and kind of scary. He looked at me and he said, there are many deeper truths that you are just not ready to understand. And he was like, that you're just not, you're just not capable of understanding them. So he said, so I need to kind of give you the baby food first. Hmm. 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 Okay. Um, but then he says, so let me, let me read you this verse in Revelation. And it was a verse having to do with like the living water. And I, I'm listening to him. He had all these places saved in his, the Bible app on his phone, highlighted to where he could just go to them. Very routine, which is fine. He points me to the verse, and again, I'm like, okay, so you're using this verse to say that we should be worshiping this heavenly mother who's like on the same level with God. You're giving me these verses, but there's nothing clearly in these verses that is pointing to a heavenly a heavenly mother. And again, when I asked, does Jesus refer, point to the heavenly mother, he said, oh, these truths are too deep for me right now. So then this question popped in my head, so I went ahead and asked him, all right, so if I leave this conversation with you right now, you can see by this conversation that I do have a heart to seek the Lord. I am in his word. I was probably surprising him with the fact that I, I was referring to different scriptures. He could tell that I was a man of the word. I said, if I leave this conversation right now and I do not accept this concept of God the mother, if I do not worship God the mother, am I going to go to hell or am I going to still go to heaven because I'm seeking God seeking what the Bible says. I have salvation through Christ, but am I going to go to hell because I have not accepted God the mother? And he ultimately said, yes, you are. And then one of the other guys jumped in and he said, 
just as the Pharisees read scripture but missed Jesus, you can be reading scripture and miss God the mother. So I ended up telling these guys, hey, I think you're stretching. At this point, I didn't know a whole lot about them. They were from the World Mission Society Church of God. That's the church that they were a part of. But yeah, I let them know, I think you guys are stretching. They invited me to a Zoom Bible study, which I, um, you know, I, I let them know just by the way that I, I left the encounter, respectfully, obviously, shook their hands, but I'm not going to be attending that Bible study. But then as I'm walking through Walmart after we've parted ways, I'm diving a little bit more into World Mission Society, Church of God, and their beliefs, and it gets worse. And that's what's so fascinating is I think you can have these conversations with people out and about, and I honestly, I applaud their boldness. I wish more Christians were bold like this, engaging people and confidently and boldly proclaiming the gospel. But it's interesting that you can have these conversations with these type of people that are ultimately part of a cult, I strongly believe, and they seem very personable and conversational and normal. And they're saying, let's dive into scripture. They're inviting you to their Zoom Bible studies. Even though they're trying to convince me about God the mother, they don't seem that whack. And if there's people that are watching that maybe are in this church right now, my heart goes out to you. I'm, I'm sad for you, and I hope that you will get out and get back on the true path of Christianity, embracing the fundamental Christian tenets instead of getting off in the really weird weeds that's honestly very scary, very scary. My throat's getting kind of dry, so I grabbed a cough drop. I'm going to talk more quietly. We're going to turn this into a little ASMR. One thing that I noticed is they start out kind of introducing doctrines again and then going back to scripture and saying, see, scripture, scripture, and it starts out a little bit like the softballs of like, hmm, it doesn't seem quite right, but he is pointing to a lot of scripture, but then, you know, you start looking more into this thing. Let me read a little bit. I just Googled <laughs> World Mission Society, Church of God, and several things obviously came up. Uh, one thing says, here's what they believe in. The church believes in God the Father and God the Mother, claiming to be restoring the truth and practices of the early church, which he kind of uh, alluded to. The church also believes that co-founder Zhang Gil Jia is God the mother as taught by the founder Ah Sang Hong. Okay, so what's going on there? Let's let's keep reading. Something else I, I just Googled her name, Zong Gil Ja. Zong Gil Ja is a South Korean woman believed to be God the Mother. So this church actually believes that God the Mother is alive right now within the World Mission Society Church of God. She's 79 years old known for God the Mother, other names, New Jerusalem, God the Mother, Elohim Mother, Heavenly Mother. All right, so this is getting really weird really fast. And I was reading another article that talks about errors of this church. And by the way, I was also uh, earlier today watching a Mike Winger video that I'm going to link below where he dives into a lot of it. Very good video because there's chances that you've been approached by these guys and maybe it's challenged and confused you, his video is very good. But uh, this one article talks about uh, theology errors, and it says, they assert that Christ already returned in human form 50 plus years ago in the form of their founder. Although he has died, they await the return of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so Christ returns. The founder of this movement is Christ. He returns and then he dies. Okay. Meanwhile, they worship his widow as God the mother. So, uh, again, this, uh, this lady that I just mentioned. Guys, I, I don't think I need a, to say more on, like, whoa, this is, this is not okay. The Apostle Paul talks about um, that in the latter days, the later days, there's going to be these doctrines that give our itching ears what we want to hear. And that's something I th was thinking about as I was conversing with them and seeing the two other guys just kind of looking and nodding along and jumping in here and there. It's fun. It gives our itching ears something. Oh my goodness, listen to this new heresy is what I'm going to call it. But listen to this new doctrines and oh, we have the revelation and th these three guys, they know the deeper secrets that I don't yet know and we can share them with you. Don't buy it, guys. Stay on the straight and narrow. Get into a Bible-believing church where they can help teach you solid scripture. And yes, there are gray areas where we are allowed to see things differently, but 
to go out and start saying that there's this heavenly godmother and that Jesus came back 50 years ago and died and now here's his widow, which that stuff is whack. That stuff is whack. And one thing I noticed, and Mike Winger alludes to this, is these guys love to use analogies and say stuff like, oh, well, uh, look, all of life needs a mother. All of new life, things being born need a mother, therefore blah, blah, blah. And it's like, you can use all these analogies to your blue in the face, faith, faith, face, face. Analogies are fine in their rightful lane, but we can't use analogies to create this new stuff and ultimately twist scripture and add to scripture. That's not okay. Guys, let's actually read scripture for what the Bible says. These guys kept adding to scripture. They kept saying, see, look here, and then using analogies. What does scripture actually say? And when they're saying this verse, you can see it's pointing to God the mother, and I'm looking at it like, but it doesn't say anything about God the mother. It doesn't. But they have their ways of twisting it and manipulating it and trying to get you to believe it. And as watching Mike Winger's video, he, he said that what they're sharing and, and preaching doesn't actually work. And it's not even rational. And, and I'm like, wow, man, like it doesn't take long to see the major holes, major errors in this sect and lots of other cults. So major lessons and takeaways from today's video you never know what you're gonna experience at Walmart, and that's part of the fun. And two, beware of cults. and Make sure you're diving in and studying the Bible for yourself. Guys, comment below. Are you familiar at all with World Mission Society Church of God? Have you ever been approached by them? What are your thoughts on everything that I shared in this video? I wanna hear them. We love you guys, and we will see you for our next video, which I'm very excited about. Stay tuned. It's dropping very soon. Have hope and be free. So yeah, they say that this Korean woman is God the mother and that her husband, because she's still alive, her husband has passed, but he was Jesus' comeback. Why would Jesus be married to his mother? Cult done! Hey guys, as you may have noticed, we get very few brand deals. A big reason for that is because we make unashamedly Christian content. We've had brand deals taken away from us because people who don't like us reach out to them and demand that they cancel us. Due to the fact that we stand on what the Bible says and we don't conform to culture. Which is why our patrons, the names you see here, are so important. You guys really are the lifeblood of this ministry. We could not do it without you all. If you guys believe in this content and you want to partner with us on Patreon, go to patreon.com slash paulandmorganshow or click the link in the description. Go, Go team. team. That was the one. That was the one. <laughs>